This is a follow-up video of my previous video on uh, how to take away the weeds in my lawn and I had a lot of Japanese stilt grass you will find on my channel. So today I'm going to cover those uh, trouble spots or the places I removed the stilt grass with new seeds and this is around uh, the third week of September and uh, it's a good time to go and plant some seeds uh, before the leaves started start to fall so probably you need at least three to four weeks of the grass able to grow before the leaves cover them up and what I'm going to use is I have two types of grass seeds and you will see probably the same grass seeds I have planted in my front yard in this backyard I have a little bit um, a different grass you can see the density so I'm taking a little different step than the front yard and you can see my trouble spots already where a lot of stilt grass was there and I've pulled them out and there are some bare spots so the first one I'm going to do is a seed blend I got from a local garden center and the reason I do with the seed blend from a garden center is they they give me the best seed types for my area so you can see it has a combination of tall fescue which is a turf type tall fescue and a Kentucky bluegrass so uh, these these are all uh, cold cool season grasses so it may not be applicable if you are in the very hot region but if you are in the middle portion of the United States or northern um, these are very good and you can see these are meant for northern Virginia which I am in, in here and this one has if you look in the back it has the firecracker tall fescue which is the blend I like and that has almost 24 um, percent of the grass seed and then the Avenger tall fescue Avenger 2 tall fescue is also a good blend so these are the the and then the super bonio tall fescue so there are some blends which um, are really dark green in color and especially I like those rather than you can also go with your other uh, fescues as you like. Um, the good thing is you should look in the back of the the seed packet to see which uh, grass you are getting. The other thing you will probably see in my other video is you want to see how much of the crop or um, you know uh, or weed seeds are there, and that should be in the minimum. So here the weed seeds are 0.09 percent and also the inert matter and the inert matter is 1.8 percent in most of the other name brand seeds and i don't want to name those those seed brands now they have started putting in filler material so they germinate faster they say coating material and usually those coating materials will have almost 50 percent of the weight of the seed so if you're buying a seven pound bag or a 20 pound bag whatever it is this is a five pound bag in in my case i'm getting almost five pounds of seed um, rather than any coating inert material whereas in those bags you will see it has 50 percent of coating material which really doesn't give you enough seed now the other one i'm going to use is from uh, home depot i picked this up is a vigoro i have been using this seed just because you can see the continuous repair technology um, or in there in the back you will see the the type of tall fescue is the RTF and in in this case the the largest uh, amount is the Falcon 4 RTF then there is a bar 3FA you can look up these fescue blends and you will see that the RTF is the rhizomatous tall fescue which actually uh, grows like with uh, rhizomes and it, it uh, uh, spreads uh, unlike the regular fescue which will be more of a bunch grass so these can spread just like uh, the uh, bluegrass does and I like that and I'll show you some pictures of my previous uh, RTF blends and those are little not very those are uh, dark green also but not uh, uh, very thick leaves um, so they are much uh, better to plant uh, in a in a 
in a lawn if you if you like uh, thinner blades the other thing here also you will see the reason i i buy these are the amount of inert matter it's uh, 1% inert matter and 0.1% weed seed so that's a very good amount um and mostly you are getting the seeds so pure seed is is almost 100% so this one will cover up to 1000 square feet for reseeding so i'm going to spread these uh, along with my other one here which shows it can you have to need you need four pounds per thousand square feet for overseeding and this one comes with a five pound bag so i don't have enough to do um a little over probably i have around two thousand square feet on my backyard here is the grass which i planted last season and this is the rtf and you can see it's much thinner blades and more preferable for a lawn where you don't want too thick of a, a blade, but it's okay. It means um, I don't need that thin of a blade, but I'm fine because once you walk on it, it's, it's going to be much softer on the feet. Whereas with the thick blades, uh, it's going to be a little, you know, it, it will poke into the into the uh, feet so this is what the rtf is going to produce so the tools i'm going to use is just a weed puller to pull some weeds out of where i can and then i have a hard rake here so you might need a hard rake to loosen the soil and of course i have gloves so i'm going to stay away from putting fertilizer at this point because i'm not going to cut the grass short um, in the back and I don't want the fertilizer to keep the grasses growing too fast because I don't want to mow that often when the seedlings are coming out. So either you'll see my other video where I had mowed the front yard pretty low and that's what recommended is you want to mow it low. Not only that it opens up the soil for the seeds to germinate and the sunlight to get to the seeds but also you don't have to mow within the next at least two to three weeks and that will get the new seed seeds and the seedlings of the grass come out and uh, be able to establish themselves so the first step is i'm going to loosen the soil with my hard rake here and this is very important because this takes a little bit of work but unless you loosen the soil and take the all the um, the dead leaves or grass out you don't want to put put new seeds in so uh, as much as you can you need to loosen at least the top layer of the soil and um, prepare the soil for it so I'm going to take away as much dead stuff as I can and you will see the soil will be ready for planting So as I use the hard rake, you can see I'm able to pull out any dead grass and mostly these are the annual grasses that have died down or you know some of them are still grass that you'll see in my other video. But also it, it opens up the soil for me to plant. So I want nothing to cover my seeds as they are put down on the soil and this loosening up the soil is very important as the seed needs to get in touch with the with the uh, dirt in there and if you just lay it on top of the dirt you might get a little bit of results but you won't get that good of a germination and that's where most of our homeowners like me that fail and we just put the seeds down without prepping the soil for it so this hard rake is is a good thing to to get one if you don't have it and also what i do is i pull out any weeds that i find so if you have any crab grass pull it by the roots now the the soil is a little moist and the roots will come out 
and also what is going to do is open up the soil for me to put some new seeds in there so to put down the seeds once you have loosened the top portion you can just spread the seeds based on the recommended level I usually put as much as I have or need in this case I have enough for this area and the more you do the thicker the grass will be so I tend to be on the on the higher seed level and that way you will have also better seed germination and uh, so once you put down the seed the next step is very important is you need to cover that seed up with the soil so what I do is I take my hard rake again and then I lightly rake back and forth so the seed is getting covered by the dirt you will still see some seeds which is fine but most of the seeds will get a little bit under the ground and that's what you need is you need to lightly rake the seeds into the soil and get them in so I do it so that it gets good soil contact and once you water this after this these seeds will be pulled a little bit further down into the soil with the water and it will germinate much better so this step is very important to make the seed soil contact and in many cases it's not always possible to rake where you have good grass because then I will be pulling the grass out and this is where you can put down a layer of mulch not a mulch actually it's a layer of compost or any kind of topsoil that you have so that the seeds get covered in the dirt because if you have a bigger area it's difficult to to rake the whole area and put seeds down so in most of my areas for overseeding I'm going to just spray the seeds and since I have some manure that you will see in my other video and that gives me a really good result with the seed germination but if you don't have it this is going to give you good results as well so loosen the soil at least the top half inch of the soil and let the seed fall into the soil contact with the soil and then once you water it it will be covered also this helps in the birds not picking up the seeds or you know getting to the seeds and it helps with the germination as well and you don't have to cover with straw I don't ever cover with straw because you need the sunlight to get onto the soil and lastly not the least this is very important is you need to water the lawn at least two times a day if possible three times a day so that the soil that you just put seeds on is moist all the time and the contact with the soil and the seed with water will get you the germination rate that's listed on the seed packet hope this helps and I will post some more videos in a couple of weeks to show how my seeds germinated and you can see that I have not used any fertilizer yet what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the fertilizer down in a couple of weeks when the grass seeds have germinated you can put a starter fertilizer which I have done in in other cases but this time I don't want the regular grass to grow too far too too long and I have to mow before the new seedlings uh, take root so I want to reduce the fertilization until two weeks or possibly three weeks and I will do a final fall fertilization or winter fertilization before uh, I let the grass uh, grow for the rest of uh, the fall so you can subscribe to my channel and you'll see my other videos on the grass as well as some gardening videos 
and if you have any comments you can comment on the on the comments link and i will try to answer your questions if you have any